Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thanks for stopping by for Rotors Explained. Rotors for every application. We're gonna break down what a rotor is, how a rotor works, and where they should be used throughout a variety of landscapes. So hopefully you take away something from this that is really valuable to your business. Now, I wanna introduce our presenters for today. So in the upper left-hand corner, weighing in at 30 years at Hunter Industries, a product manager for Rotors, we have Steve Hovland. He is a wonderful guy, great knowledge. He's pretty much managed every product that we have here at Hunter Industries. So he knows these products inside and out. So I'm really excited about what he has to say today. And then in the bottom left-hand corner, we have Tom Armbruster, 17 years at Hunter Industries. He's a sales manager out of the New York area. So if you're in the New York area, make sure you take down his email if you don't have it already, so you can reach out to him after the call. If you have any questions, great guy to have contact information for. And if you're over in the Northern California area, we have Chris McNary, who's been with Hunter Industries for 19 years. Wow. All right, 30, 19, and 17. We got a lot of years combined here. I'm the new guy on the block. But Chris, if you are in that Northern California area, please reach out to him and grab that email right there. If you're not in either of these territories and you don't know who your sales manager is, please reach out to us, either me at greg.rosink at hunterindustries.com or training at hunterindustries.com, and we'll get you in touch with your local sales manager. Now, like I mentioned, I'm Greg Rosink, product training specialist here at Hunter Industries, and I've been here for about three years. And I'm excited to see what Steve, Chris, and Tom have to say about rotors today, just like I'm sure most of you are. So I don't want to delay it any further, and I'm going to hand it over to Steve. Steve, take it away. Thanks, Greg, and hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us to learn about Hunter Rotors. Our history with rotors dates back to the 1960s when Ed Hunter first developed a gear-driven rotor. Shortly after Hunter's inception in 1981, he was joined by the rest of his family to develop our first rotor, the Series 75. Ed, his wife, Frances, and children, Dick, Ann, and Paul, each had an important part to play in the development and operation of Hunter Industries. Hunter today has over 500,000 square feet of manufacturing facilities in both San Marcos and in Tijuana, Mexico, and is operated by Greg Hunter, the grandson of Ed. Rotors play a critical role in our landscape irrigation projects. Depending on the size of the area, they can irrigate uh, mid-range to large areas very economically and efficiently. In this diagram, they can be used very effectively in areas A, B, and D. Areas C and E are better served by using other irrigation choices. Spray heads, stream nozzles, and rotors are all an effective way to water the turf depending on the size. But how exactly do hunter rotors work? The incoming force of the water not only raises the riser, but it also turns the turbine at the bottom of the gear drive, which turns the entire gear drive mechanism, turning the nozzle housing. The water is then dispersed either from a single orifice nozzle or from multiple, multiple orifice nozzles. It is important to select the right rotor for the right application. It may be that a shrub rotor is needed to mount on a riser or there may be small areas of landscape that need short distance rotors, or the need may be a large sports field. All nozzles are designed to deliver water efficiently at the optimum pressure. On the left is a sprinkler that has large water droplets because it's running at the correct pressure. On the right is a sprinkler that is operating with too much pressure, creating small water droplets leading to wind drift. But how do I check the pressure at each rotor to make sure that it's correct? A pitot tube is really the only accurate method. It can easily be used on single stream rotors and provide an accurate pressure reading. Other gauges are used on spray bodies. That's so true, Steve. A pitot tube and a gauge is to the irrigation expert what a stethoscope is to a doctor. Would you ever go to a doctor that didn't use a stethoscope? Probably not. In these charts, you'll see various pressures shown for the nozzles. Some nozzles require 30 to 50 PSI for the optimum pressure, while 
The nozzles shown in the middle chart require 40 to 70 PSI for the best performance. And the higher flow nozzles on the right-hand chart require 60 to 90 PSI for proper, efficient operation. Please consult the nozzle chart for the sprinklers that you are using to determine the best pressure. When designing a system, you need to take into consideration the available flow rate as well as the static and dynamic pressure, which will also point you in a direction as to which rotor to select for your application. We often get those questions uh, in the field as to what rotor do I use? Now you have an idea. It is also industry best practice for you to use nozzles that will provide match precipitation. But what does that mean? It means having an even application of water over the entire arc pattern or square footage of the sprinklers, whether it's a quarter, half, or full circle operation. In this example, a one gallon per minute nozzle is used in a quarter circle sprinkler, applying one gallon per minute to the 90 degree arc pattern. A two gallon per minute nozzle is used in a half circle application, applying one gallon per minute to each 90 degree arc pattern section. And a four gallon per minute nozzle is used to apply one gallon per minute to each of the four 90 degree arc patterns. Selecting three different flow rate nozzles provides match precipitation when grouped together with the same runtime. This example shows not having match precipitation. Here, a four gallon per minute nozzle is used in the quarter circle sprinkler, applying four gallons per minute to the 90 degree arc pattern. And the same four gallon per minute nozzle is used in a half circle application, applying two gallons per minute to each 90 degree arc pattern. And the same four gallon per minute nozzle is used to apply one gallon per minute to each of the four 90 degree arc patterns. Selecting the same flow rate nozzle for 90, 180, and 360 degree nozzles does not provide match precipitation. This can lead to wet areas in the corners and uneven application of water. Now, on sports fields, it's recommended to use all of the same nozzle for every sprinkler, no matter the arc pattern. That way we get the same radius of throw for each. Makes it easy to lay out those rotors. Unfortunately, often this causes problems with wet areas and dry areas because they are not using match precipitation as they often have the quarter, half, and full circle rotors on the same valve. The best way to achieve a match precipitation is to group the 90s on their own zone, then the 180s on their own zone, and the 360s on their own zone. Then at the controller, if the 360s are scheduled for 40 minutes, then the 180s would be scheduled for 20 minutes half the time of 360s, and 90s would be scheduled for 10 minutes, a quarter of the time for the 360s. Tom, what's your suggestion for regarding the installation method of these rotors? Well, any contractor will tell you that the recommended depth to bury the sprinkler is the most critical thing that can happen for the longevity of the product. Hunter and every other manufacturer recommends that the rotors be installed slightly above the actual dirt level. This will allow even the tightest mowing cutting heights to easily pass over the head, but will prevent the head from being buried too low where it will sit in a mud slurry, collecting water every time it pops up for a cycle and retracts when the watering is completed. That mud slurry acts as an abrasive and gradually wears out the shafts, seals, retainers, and all the components that form the positive sealing for the rotor. Heads buried too low, depending on the soil type, will generally wear out, wear out three to four times faster than heads buried at the proper height and without the constant wear and tear of that abrasive dirt. Thanks, Tom. Hunter manufactures a wide variety of rotors for all applications, from residential to large turf. There are many similarities with all rotors. They're all turned by a sealed gear drive. They're all adjustable in arc pattern. They all have rubber covers and the parts are easily interchangeable. Tom, please describe another important aspect of our rotors. Well, again, a contractor will tell you that one of the best features of Hunter rotors is the very wide variety of nozzles that we offer. 
We have standard trajectory nozzles. We also have many low angle, short radius, match precipitation rate nozzles to choose from. They allow the users to fine tune any design that they have. Savvy users will utilize these nozzles to spray over something, under something, low clearance areas, tight areas, making for a perfect installation. Thanks, Tom. Let's talk about a few of our rotors. The PGJ is a great choice of rotor for the turf areas, areas that are just a little too large for sprays, but not big enough for a full-size rotor. The PGP was introduced in 1985 and has been one of our largest selling rotors for several years. Only minor improvements have been made to the overall design to improve long-term durability. It's been an op ample selection on both standard and low angle high efficiency nozzles for use in all applications. The Sprinter operates at low pressures, producing beautiful results for many, many years with very little maintenance, even though some operating conditions are less than optimal. The PGP Ultra is an upgraded rotor with several user-friendly features. The flat top standard blue and gray low angle nozzle choices go in perfectly straight every time, and they are held in place with the headed slotted nozzle retainer screw. This easy to clean screw allows you to use a hunter wrench or a straight blade screwdriver to make radius adjustments. One of the best things about the PGP Ultra, along with the I-20, I-25, and I-40, are three key advanced features. Automatic arc return, returns the original arc setting to the sprinkler, non-strippable back drive, prevents gear damage, and adjustable from 50 to 360 in one unit, allows for easy arc adjustment and reduced stock. The most important feature is automatic arc return. I want to be clear, this is not memory arc. With memory arc, if the sprinkler is set to 90, say 12 to 3 on the clock, then it's turned outside the intended 90 degree area, say 3 to 6 on the clock, it will remember the arc of 90 degrees, but it will stay in the incorrect area. Under the same conditions when ours is vandalized or turned, it retains the arc setting of 90 degrees and returns exactly to the previous correct arc area of 12 to 3. With Hunter, there isn't a callback to fix a sprinkler that's throwing into the house or driveway. This automatic arc return feature is invaluable. For the ultimate upgrade, take a look at the i20. It has the same flow and radius performance as the PGP Ultra, but it comes standard with a flow stop that allows the head to be temporarily turned off so the user can easily and quickly install, remove, and clean nozzles. It comes standard with a strong retraction spring and a drain check valve. In my market area, there are several contractors that started offering stainless I-20s or six-inch pop-up I-20s as a commercial upgrade to their standard daily sales calls. Simply by offering an upgraded sprinkler at an upgraded price and promoting the five-year warranty, they are now selling about 50 to 80 percent of their residential jobs with this upgrade. If a customer sees and understands value, they will seriously consider the benefits. It's more profitable because it takes the same amount of time to install a standard rotor as an upgraded rotor, and those products are available at Hunter. Thanks, Tom, for the good news about selling upgrades. Many of our customers have pressures that are too high. Both the PGP Ultra and the I-20 are available with a pressure regulator built into the bottom of the body, ensuring that the nozzle will be operated at the correct pressure. It takes incoming pressures of up to 100 PSI and reduces them down to 45 PSI. The lower pressure creates larger water droplets that drift less in the wind, allowing the nozzles to operate at peak efficiency. The pressure on the top of the piston forces the piston and spring down, so the piston begins to close off the gap with the valve, reducing the flow. The piston closes the gap until the upward force of the spring equals the downward force of the piston. Reduced flow equals reduced pressure. 
my market, we have many slopes that create high pressure due to elevation changes. With a pressure-regulated shrub rotor, the pressure can easily be regulated for top, efficient nozzle performance at each location. And on those projects where sprinklers are already installed, they can easily be removed, then an under the sprinkler regulator can be installed at each head location. Thanks, Chris. We hear about nozzles and their efficiency, but how do the customers really know for sure? Our ISO certified test room provides many details about the nozzles, including accurate radius and flow information that we then publish in a catalog and website. It allows development of high performance nozzles, allowing users to conserve water. There is continual testing of nozzle performance, ensuring the nozzles meet our high standards, and frequent competitor benchmarking keeps us on top of our game. The catchments measure the nozzle performance in two foot increments. A performance profile is generated and scored, and then we can look at it in densigram form to determine how evenly the water is falling across the surface of the turf. This particular nozzle resulted in a DU of 88%, typical of hunter rotors. Additional tests include UV testing to get results quickly for sun damage, life cycle, life wear testing provides thousands of hours of durability testing, high pressure burst testing ensures the product strengths, and external sand ensures long-term riser seal quality. Special rotors are used in large turf and sports applications. They are designed for safety and efficiency with the smallest exposed surface area in their product category. The exposed surface is topped with an extra thick rubber cover and the sprinklers have stainless steel risers for durability. And when combined with the super strong retraction spring, they ensure positive retraction and no damage. All of the sprinklers include several high efficiency color coded nozzles. The I-25 is used for both large residential, commercial and sports field sites. It has a long radius with several pop-up models available in both plastic and stainless, all of which have a standard drain check valve. And the I-25 has a wide range of color-coded dual orifice nozzles for high performance. The I-40 is the standard by which all sports turf rotors are measured. It too has a long radius with both four and six inch pop-up models. The stainless steel riser is standard along with a thick rubber cover, a much stronger retraction spring, and a drain check valve that holds back up to 15 feet of elevation change. The I-40 has a wide range of color-coded nozzles, all dual orifice nozzles. One of the I-40 features that I especially like is the opposing nozzle option for parks, athletic fields, and golf courses. The full circle opposing nozzles have a range nozzle on one side for a long distance and a spreader nozzle on the back side for up close and mid-range coverage. The two nozzles combined not only have superior water distribution, but also have improved wind resistance. And Hunter is the only company that has recognized the need for such a great product in the market. Thanks, Chris. Please let me introduce the new I-50 large turf rotor. It's the only one we have with a super strong diesel motor. What? A diesel motor? It also has similar performance specifications to the I-40, but it has three key features that make it head and shoulders above the I-40. It has a very strong planetary gear drive assembly that drives through extremely harsh water quality conditions and external contaminants. It also has below the turret arc adjustment that allows easy arc adjustment while the sprinkler is operating. To handle dirty water, it has an extra large filter screen with double the filter area, preventing additional maintenance and cleaning. And the best part is that it uses the same body as the six inch I-25 and I-40, so it's easy to retrofit into existing projects. And similar to the I-40, the I-50 is available in a full circle opposing nozzle model. If your need is for a longer radius and higher flow rate than the I-40 or the I-50, 
then the I-80 will meet your needs. The I-80 has a very large inch and a half inlet to handle the flow. Fully adjustable arc and full circle opposing nozzle models are available. What makes the I-80 so unique for sports surf applications is that it's the first total top service commercial gear drive rotor. Simply remove the snap ring on the top and the internal assembly can easily be removed for cleaning or service, all completed with a minimum amount of damage to the turf. The I-90 is another great choice to use for longer radius higher flow projects. All rotors, especially commercial rotors on high traffic and high maintenance turf with heavy equipment on them regularly should be installed with swing joints. We offer a full line of pre-assembled swing joints in different sizes and lay lengths. A swing joint offers many advantages over a hard riser piping. The ease of installation of installing a head to level is infinitely easier with a swing joint that allows for the head to be easily raised and lowered. Over the course of its life, the head can take severe weight from heavy equipment, can depress into the ground, even depress hard to the side. With a swing joint, it can easily be re-leveled without any damage to the fittings. The threaded connections often have O-rings, O-ring seals, swivels in all directions. The head can withstand severe movement, even upheaval due to, to freezing climates without any damage to the head or the fixed piping grid below. In many markets, reclaimed water is used for irrigation, and that continues to grow every year. To identify that reclaimed water is being used, our sprinklers are available with purple rubber covers. It is suggested to order them as factory installed. As you have seen, we have a wide variety of products used for spacings of 15 to 100 feet, and many of them have additional features like auto arc return that make them the very best. They're easy to install, operate, and maintain. They have a large variety of nozzles and several special application models as well. And we are confident in their quality. But what about synthetic turf fields? Why would you have synthetic turf if everyone prefers natural turf? Is it to eliminate maintenance cost? No, they'll still need some maintenance. Or eliminate water usage? No. They still need a little water. Is it to eliminate chemicals and fertilizers? Well, maybe in part. The main reason is to provide a better, look better looking and safer playing surface as compared to poorly maintained natural turf. But if you have synthetic turf, you still need irrigation. You need the ST system. What is the ST system? It's an integrated heavy duty cost competitive solution designed specifically for cleaning, cooling, and preparing synthetic turf sports fields for play. There are two models available, big and jumbo. The big one has a radius range of 100 to 120 feet, and the jumbo one has a radius range of 105 to 165 feet. When placed along the sidelines of a soccer field, they will reach about two thirds of the way across the field or the hash marks, just enough to clean and cool the surface. I certainly like this installation as it's in Napa, which is right next door to where I live. I was part of this installation, uh, one of the very first installations of the ST system, and today it is still working just as it was when it was first installed. Thanks everyone for taking time to see our rotors. We'll be happy to address any questions. Great, thank you. Any uh, other comments that you had or tips and tricks that you wanted to share with the audience before we go into those questions? It would help if I unmuted. Uh, I would certainly <laughs> say that uh, over over the years as I've, I've gone out to, to help people with rotors uh, out in the field, number one issues that I run across are low pressure um, and incorrect nozzling. So I'm training all the time, uh, as we showed today in the presentation, that it's so important to have match precipitation rate, the correct nozzles, and the correct operating pressure to keep users from getting those donuts, as they like to say, or dry spots in their fields. Tom, what about you? What do you run across? I agree a thousand percent that 
as contractors get busier and busier and the work gets more and more out there, then they get a little sloppy in measuring the nozzles and putting in accurate nozzles is the most important part of the business so that we have even precipitation and we use the, the product wisely. I want to add something onto that. We have the option or contractors have the option to order rotors with the valves pre-installed on some of our lines. And sometimes when they get it from the distributor, they've been ordered that way, but they aren't familiar with why. So they assume that we just put number four nozzles in all of our rotors because maybe that's the way that that batch was uh, actually originally ordered. So they'll know, oh, well, there's a nozzle in the rotor, so I can just immediately go to that installation and just put the rotor in the ground because it's already got the right nozzle in it, which isn't the case. As we mentioned in here, it's important to make sure that you have the right nozzle for the right application and that when the system is designed by a designer, there's certain specifications that they've looked at based on the design capacity of the system and the amount of flow available to each station based on pressure. So if you take and you put the wrong size nozzle on something that was intended to have a, maybe a two gallon per minute nozzle, but you put a four gallon per, per minute nozzle, that's gonna double the flow of that zone and it's gonna double what was intended by the designer when he was putting the system together. So it's always important to look at the plans as an installer to make sure you're installing the right nozzle because the wrong nozzle can break that system or make it not work efficiently and give you poor coverage. So that's always something I wanna point out. Now, as far as questions, we had a question. This is kind of a specific question. I'll, I'll give this one over to you, Steve. Steve, what kind of plastic do we use in our nozzles? It depends on the nozzles themselves, but the smaller uh, nozzles like PGPs, PGP Ultras and I-20s are made out of high density polyethylene. The nozzles for the larger sprinklers, I-25s, I-40s and largers, larger are made out of a hard, harder plastic called acetal. So it just depends on the type of nozzle that we're, that we're using and, the, uh, and that determines the type of plastic. Is there a benefit in efficiency or integrity in those nozzles based on the quality of plastic you're using? It's not so much about the quality of plastic as you, uh, we're using, it's just about the, the type of plastic that we're using. We've done a lot of testing on our, on our high density polyethylene nozzles for PGPs all the way through I-20s. We found that they last for many, 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 many years. And so they're very, very durable. Sometimes rotors like I-25s, I-40s and I-50s and others can see much harsher water going through them, much more sandy, more, more debris filled. And so they need a harder plastic nozzle to do a better job of, of remaining solid long-term. Okay, thanks. This question is, some manufacturers are stressing metal versus plastic internal components. Is there a significant difference that you find? Well, Hunter is a plastics manufacturing company. And many, many years ago when Ed Hunter developed his first gear drive, he made the, the gears out of steel. But it was quickly realized that steel gears are much more difficult to, to manufacture in high volume accurately. And so he went to, to uh, plastic, plastic gears and the speed at which they're turning inside, very low torque. And so it, plastic gears are very, very strong and very, very durable. So we test our sprinklers for thousands of hours and we've not seen any, any degrading of our, our gear performance because they're plastic and not metal. Okay. This question comes in from Jim. Jim was wondering, is there a swing joint option to combat the high cost of pre-manufactured swing joints? Probably the O-ring swing joints that you were mentioning, those white ones earlier in the presentation. There's also, there's also hand-built swing joints that you could put together with, with PVC nipples and threaded 90s and so forth. That's an option, but it's more labor intensive to put together and they're not quite as good. In fact, they're not good by a long, long stretch. These swing joints that we have that are pre-manufactured with O-rings allow easy flexibility to raise, lower, move the sprinkler from side to side. And sometimes when you build a swing joint out of hand-built materials, PVC and others, it doesn't really flex all that much. They're pretty tough. In fact, many, many years ago, for those of you that have been in the industry for a long time, will remember when there used to be a galvanized swing joint. 
which is kind of an oxymoron. Once you put that galvanized together, it doesn't swing anymore. It might as well be a solid piece of pipe. And so now with the advent of the new plastics technology and the O-ring seals, they're much, much better to have a pre-built swing joint. So for the few dollars long-term that it's gonna cost you to put this, this product in, it, it's gonna pay back, especially over the course of time as you service that, that rotor on the sports field, change it out, raise it, lower it, straighten it due to the, the changing turf conditions. So a nice pre-built swing joint is well worth the money. Thanks. This one's for you, uh, Chris or Tom. How does one prevent washout on a new installation around the head with I-40? Actually, actually, Steve should take that because there's uh, some options that are available and some little tricks that he might be able to tell you about. Okay. The I-40 does a great job. It's got triple port nozzles. It has an interchangeable main range nozzle, a fixed mid range nozzle. But as you stand behind the I-40 sprinter on the right hand side, there's a little close in nozzle. That close in nozzle does an awesome job of delivering water right up close to the head. And in the vast majority of the projects, it does a perfectly good job. However, sometimes in new seated conditions where there's no turf installed, and if the sprinkler's a little bit low, or if it's not perfectly vertical, that little up close nozzle will sometimes wipe out a little seed right up close to the sprinkler just because it's got too much water. Normally a good problem to have. So in that case, there's a little trick to insert the, the metal part of the hunter wrench inside that little nozzle while the sprinkler is popped up and running and to lift it up just a little bit and it raises a little plastic diffuser pin that, that uh, reduces the amount of up close headwater close to the sprinkler. And we found that to be very, very successful. We've also found that once that pin is lifted, there's not really a need to lift it or to push it back down. So it's uh, once it's there, it's good to go, and your I-40s will perform flawlessly for many years. Great. Well, there's also Great uh, there's also a little trick that um, a lot of contractors that do commercial work with I-40s, especially athletic fields that are seated, what they'll do is they'll just buy a couple of pieces of sod, cut them into two foot squares, and when they bury the head and plant the product, they'll set it in that sod ring. When the head pops up and down, it's now the downward stream that's watering close to the head is diffused by the sod and you don't get any of that seed wash out. So if you don't wanna pick the pin up like Steve's tip is telling you, and you wanna leave that in for the close in watering, that sod works like a great trick and it works every single time. Another great tip. So one of the questions that we got was, when you're installing the head, should you account for trench settling or head settling when you're setting the height of the riser or at the head above the grade? I, I'd be glad to take that one. Okay. Um, I, the answer is, kind of no. The answer is that you should pre-tamp before you set the head. You should pre-tamp your lines. You should water them in, whether you trench or whether you pull with a vibratory plow. If you try to guess where the settling is going to be, you're not going to be right. You're going to be close. Some are going to be too high. Some are going to be too low. So most of the installers, what will what they'll do is they'll put in their piping grid and they'll leave their risers sticking up out of the ground. They'll then tamp, wheel roll, water, do whatever they've got to do to reset the ground. Then they'll go back and install the sprinklers. I wouldn't leave or guess anything to do with leveling the head. Okay. Anybody else have something to add to that? I think that was a great answer. No, I would, I, I would say that um, it's never a set it and forget it situation. Um, you're going to get heads that are going to settle over time. And a lot of the issues that I see out in the field is that, you know, heads have settled. And as Tom was talking about earlier in the presentation, it's really key to make sure that we get these rotors set at the correct height um, when you're installing them. You will need to come back and, and make adjustments over time. So you need to make sure that you are inspecting your fields on a regular basis and uh, making sure you're budgeting for maintenance to, to come in and re-level those heads uh, as needed. Great. 
Another great tip. I'm uh, thinking of rotors and the, the, we were talking about the different flows of the nozzles. Does the flow of the nozzle affect the rotation speed of the rotor? Steve, this one might be for you. All of our rotors are designed to operate at a rotation speed that's somewhere in the two minute, two and a half minute range for a full circle. That's independent of whether or not you use a small nozzle at low pressure or a large nozzle at high pressure. Internally in the sprinkler is a, is a automatic stator valve that controls the water flow to the turbine. And so even if you just have a little bit of water, it's driving that turbine at the right speed that it, that it needs to have to, to drive that sprinkler uh, at the right rotation speed. So no, it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference regardless of the, of the pressure and regardless of the, the flow within reason. There's going to be a manufacturing range of tolerance, but the goal is to get them to operate at the same rotation speed. Okay. Now, this question came in about the densigram that you were explaining earlier. How do we determine that and how do we and how do we understand what uniformity is based on that diagram that you showed? The diagram I showed was was as the result of the performance profile that we generate in our lab. So we've got our sprinkler that we pop up. It sprays water over the catchments that are every two feet apart, and we catch water every two feet to see how evenly that water is falling across the surface of the turf. For those of you that are that are irrigation auditors, this is the exact same thing. We're auditing that nozzle, and then we're interpolating that data with a computer program, overlaying it with other nozzles of the same size, and then we're checking to see how evenly that falls across the surface of the turf. If that is something that you're inter interested in, please contact us and we're happy to provide performance profiles that show how our nozzles perform with the various different flow rates and the various pressures, as well as if you tell us the spacing, square, rectangular, uh, equilateral, triangular, whatever, as well as the distance, we can run the densigram for you and shoot that over and you can see how evenly that the water is, is falling with that particular nozzle. I will caution you, however, that this is a snapshot of that nozzle performance at that point in time. It's indicative of our overall nozzle performance that we would expect to see from our rotors, but you need to make field adjustments for your particular application. So all of these tests are done in a, in a laboratory environment in a no-wind condition, which gives us awesome accurate information. But it does not simulate any wind, and so you need to to derate the performance based upon your local knowledge of how that sprinkler is going to perform in the wind and, and go from there. So, but overall, the test room and the nozzle profile gives allows us to score a nozzle. It allows us to mold a nozzle out of out of plastic parts or check any kind of nozzle to see how not, how evenly that water is falling across the surface of the turf. We also have a similar test room that we use for spray nozzles and for our MP rotator nozzles. It has many, many more cups set up over a grid area that are actually one foot apart. And we can check to see how evenly that water is falling on the surface. Overall efficiency is the key. And that's what we're all about at Hunters, trying to have not only sprinklers that rotate, but also nozzles that deliver that water to the turf in, a, in, in an efficient manner. Perfect. This question is for distribution uniformity in one head. So I'm kind of spitballing here, but the question is, when you're using a rotor with head-to-head -head coverage, why is it so important to have head-to-head -head coverage if the water is evenly being distributed from the head out to the farthest throw? That's difficult. Made... As, we, as we get into that, as we get in, into a performance profile, there's always more water falling close to the sprinkler than there is far away. And so in general, we have a wedge profile where it, it's a, call it you know, a triangular shape, it's a, it's a wedge. And so as you place one sprinkler uh, close, then the other sprinkler waters back to it again. And so then you have even watering, but one sprinkler, because it's going in a circle, simply cannot do the job to do, to do the proper amount of evenness of coverage. Yeah, I mean, kind of what we're saying is it's not an even flat. It doesn't water the same close to the head as far away. It, it 
throws a descending pattern. The reason that you do both is so that the pattern doesn't have to be straight. It just has to be kind of even on the decline. When the other head comes in where one is strong, the other is weak and they equal a certain percentage. Right in the middle, they're both contributing 50-50. They all equal out, getting close. Now you've got even coverage across that pattern. The pattern isn't square, the pattern is descending. Okay, that makes sense. And I think you covered this briefly, Steve, but the question is, do you, do you foresee that there will ever be a full line of rotor nozzles that are matched precipitation so that quarters, halves, and fulls can be designed on the same valve with with still throwing the same radius. And depending on we the product it. you're depending on the product that you're talking about, we do have that currently. For our for our PGP Ultra and the I20, we have a set of matched precipitation nozzles that ha have a 25 foot radius, a 30 foot radius, and a 35 foot radius. So we've got quarters, thirds, halves, and fulls, and they can all be used to be put in the sprinkler and to achieve match precipitation. But but smaller, also, oh, I'm sorry, Steve, go ahead. Smaller sprinklers like spray nozzles are designed that way already. MP rotator nozzles, of course, are designed that way as, already as well. The challenge becomes once you get into the, into the large turf rotors, like what Chris was talking about, putting the 90s on their own zone, the 180s on their own zone, and then the 360s on their own zone. If we try to do that, the flow rate simply would not work out because if your if your your full circle flow rate nozzle was 20 gallons a minute and you wanted it to go 65 feet, then at 10 gallons a minute for your 180s, we, uh, excuse me, yeah, 10 gallons a minute for the 180, we definitely could not get that amount of water to squirt that far. And at five gallons a minute for a, for a 90, we definitely could not get it to go that far. But if you use all the same size nozzle, if you use all 20 gallon nozzles for 90s, 180s, and 360s, and then simply put them on their own zone, it, it's an optimum way to go. So it's difficult to have a true set of matched precipitation nozzles for the larger turf rotors when you get to that. It just, it, hydraulically, it just, it sounds like a great idea, but hydraulically it just would not work out well because there'd be so many full circles with such a high flow rate that it would not would not be good. And trust me, if it was possible, we would have done it because we <laughs> certainly have that with our MP rotators. And that's why they're so popular and so easy to use and efficient. Tom, you had something to add there? No, I, basically he said exactly what I was going to say, that hydraulically it really, you can't really do it once you get past that six, eight gallon range. If you get into high flows, it's just not going to work. Okay. Well, that's it for the questions that we have coming in. We still have a little bit of time. Um, if there was anything else you guys wanted to add before we close out, say it now. If not, we will finish up. I, I'd just like to thank everybody for attending. Um, I think this has been uh, worthwhile. Hopefully you've gotten out of it what you, what you wanted. And as, as uh, Mr. Rosink said to begin, um, please reach out to us if you have questions. And if we're not the right person to, to be able to help you in the field, we will absolutely point you to the right sales manager that can. Uh, but we're here to support you. Um, and thank you very much for attending. Ditto. Fantastic. Well, again, thank you all for stopping by. This webinar was recorded and will be located at training.hunterindustries.com under that webinars tab that we showed early on in the presentation. Also, it'll be hosted on the YouTube channel, so you can find it there later on too. This will probably be about the beginning of next week that it's available to you. So go check it out. If you, th if you know somebody that wanted to see it or you think you might know somebody who would benefit from it, definitely share that information with them as well as checking out the revitup.hunterindustries.com promotion that we talked about. And don't forget all of the great tools that we have for designing for you, uh, whether it be sample plans, sample legends, details, specifications, uh, even submittal sheets. All of that information is there for professionals so that you can easily access it from the Hunter website. So go to hunterindustries.com under the professionals tab and you can access all of that information as well as a product catalog if you don't have the most current up-to-date catalog version. So again, thank you so much for your time. We greatly appreciate your time, your business, and your support.
Stay safe out there and stay healthy. Thank you very much.